What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Apple Watch Sport. So this is the most affordable of all the Apple Watch series, starts off at 349, is available in two sizes, so we have the 38 millimeter and the 42 millimeter, and we're gonna take a look at both of them in this video. Now there are two casing colors to pick from, there is silver and space gray. Silver comes with a variety of band colors you can pick from, uh, but they're all the same price. All right, so let's get to the unboxing here. First thing I need to do is flip them over so I can slice the plastic, flip them over. All right, so let's go ahead and lift the lid. Slowly drops out. There's one, that's the 42, and this is the 38. So as you can see, basically everything has been scaled to the size of the watch, even the case. So let's go and pull that up. A little a plastic wrapper around it and a little pull tab right here to release it. So let's go and pull that. There we go. So we get our nice hard shell case. We're gonna set that aside for just a moment. You can see the Apple logo there actually. And let's get the other one out. Lift that up. Getting very nice packaging. Have a little pull tab here to release the plastic. So there we go, we have our shiny white plastic casing with our Apple logo in the center. So inside the box we'll find Design by Apple in California, a nice little packet. So if we slide everything out of here, we'll see what's in here. So we have a little quick start guide, Apple Watch. Nice little colorful quick start guide. Tells you about charging it, some of the buttons, how to fasten the uh, sport band and that sort of thing. On the back we have some tips about using the Apple Watch. We also have some regulatory information, and then we have a second band here. So this allows us to change out the band that came installed on the watch. So if you need a different size, you have an option that comes with it. Now neatly packaged at the bottom of the box is the wall adapter, pretty familiar to any iPhone user. It's basically the same unit. We also have something quite new here. This is the inductive wall charger. So this magnetically adheres to the back of the watch and charges it. Now this is plastic while the Apple Watch is stainless steel. So this is a little lower end, but the function is pretty much the same. Now taking a look at the accessories for the larger sport here, again, the packaging is pretty much identical, just scaled up for size. Uh, so we have a quick start guide, again, nice colorful quick start guide. We also have our regulatory information and we have the small slash medium watch band. So the smaller watch comes installed with a small or medium watch band while the larger watch comes installed with a larger watch band. So they give you the smaller one in the package. Now let's unwrap one of these cables. It's quite long, I believe it's two meters. So we have plenty of cable here to reach a wall, so that's kind of nice. We have some wrapping covering the uh, the charging face here, surrounding it as well. I assume on the bottom. There we go. So there's your charging face. I believe that's the charge. No, that's the charging face. You can see it's concave for the shape of the watch, and that's the bottom. All right, next up, let's get into our watches. So we have our 30 millimeter right here. So you can see that nice cushioned surface on the top of the casing, Apple Watch Sport. I have it upside down, I guess. So there you go. There we have our Apple Watch. Wrapped in plastic, let me go and pull it up. We have a nice little pull tab here. So, uh, it just tells us how to install or fasten the watch. So let me go and pull this, or here we go. Let's pull it this way, slides right out. There we go. Uh, this material is called floral elastomer. We have a little more plastic here. And it's actually quite soft as soon as you feel it. It's got this nice soft silky texture to it. It's actually really nice here. So again, that is the smallest 30 millimeter, which looks quite small to me, but we're gonna compare this to the 42 millimeter, but it is a really nice looking watch. All right, next up is the 42 millimeter, which is probably the size I would prefer. Again, a nice padded surface here, watch sport. Uh, so anyway, here you go. Here is the full size 42 millimeter. Uh, looks quite nice here. Again, it's just a scaled up version, really. Let me go and peel off all the plastic here again, go to the back, pull the tab right behind the watch. Should pop right off. And there we go. Now the first thing we need to do is boot these up for the first time. The boot up sequence takes about a minute. All I have to do is tap and hold the button below the digital crown to start it up. Now the first thing we need to do is select our language. Go ahead with English. Now we can start pairing with our devices. So of course we're gonna have to go get our iPhones. So as you can see right now, we have this little pattern appearing on the screen. Now in order to pair, all I have to do is launch the Apple Watch app, start pairing. Hover your camera over that uh, image and you're good to go. Next up, it's gonna ask you which wrist you wear your Apple Watch on. I'm gonna say left. And we're gonna to agree to our terms and conditions. And next up, I just need to enter in my Apple ID password. Next up, it's just telling me that the Apple Watch uses location services. We also have Siri and we can send diagnostics. We also can set an Apple Watch passcode if we want. And you can install available apps. So let me go ahead and install all of them. So as you can see now, the watch is syncing to my phone. Now I have to keep in mind that all versions of the Apple Watch are basically an iPhone accessory. They require an iPhone to work. Uh, so this is compatible with an iPhone 5 and up. 
Now that we're all booted up and ready to go, let's go and take a close look at the hardware, starting with the displays. Now the displays on the sports are the same on the Apple Watch and the Apple Watch Edition. So basically the same technology. Both are Retina AMOLED displays. This is the first time Apple is using any AMOLED displays in their devices, which is kind of nice. Now the 42 millimeter has about a 1.53 inch display, resolution of 312 by 390, while the 30 millimeter has a 1.32 inch display with a resolution of 272 by 340. So with a slightly smaller display, you do have less resolution. Now all Apple Watches basically have the same design. They have this curved cover glass, but the Sport has an Ion X glass, which is the same glass that's on the iPhone 6 instead of the sapphire glass that's on the other watches. But you can see the OLED display is laminated to the glass, so uh, it looks really nice and flush. And again, it looks really nice, especially with that curved glass edge. Now on the back of the watch, you'll find this composite lens, which is convex and contains our heart rate monitor, which uses two LED lights and has two receivers to pick up both infrared and visible light. Apparently these sensors are also capable of measuring blood oxygen levels, although that hasn't been activated yet. Now this is also where you charge your watch. Just bring the magnetic inductive charger next to it and it snaps into place and it's pretty secure. Now on the side of the watch, we'll find our digital crown as well as our side button and they're the same size for each watch. And on the other side, we have a microphone as well as a waterproof speaker. So this allows us to place phone calls directly on our watch, command Siri, or just listen for notification tones. Now the sport band has this tuck and fasten design, which is pretty simple. It's pretty easy to install and adjust. So basically you just tuck one strap under the other and then find the right size for you and snap it into place. Now it's really easy to swap out the bands on these watches. All you have to do is press the button toward the edge of the watch and you can slide out the bands. Now if you look closely at the inside of that groove, you'll see that little button which fastens to the watch. You can also see there's this little hidden door which is kind of a diagnostic door. You can remove that panel apparently, at least Apple support can do it for you, and uh, run some diagnostic tests on it. You can also see the model number etched inside. Snapping the new band on is pretty easy. All you have to do is slide it in and snaps into place. Now side by side, you can see the 42 comes installed with the longer watch band while the 38 has the shorter watch band. So what I'll have to do here is take out the large band that comes with the 38 and install that because the uh, band that's included is way too short for my wrist. So with a larger watch band installed, you can see the watch band is about the same size or same length as the large one. Now for the most part, I personally prefer the 42 millimeter. It's larger for my larger wrists and larger hands, so it's more appropriate for me, I would say, but I'm surprised by how well the 38 millimeter works on my wrist. It's not too small. and actually may fit a little bit better than the 42 millimeter, which is a little on the chunky side, uh, but either one will work. And if you want to save $50, you probably could get away with the 38 millimeter unless you have a really chunky wrist. Now the only drawback to the smaller watch is that you have a smaller display to interact with. Now, I will be covering the interface in a separate video because there is a lot to talk about and a lot of features to go over, which will be a very long video, I'm sure. But for the meantime, I just want to quickly show you how this works. So you can swipe down on the watch face to see your notifications. I have none right now. You can swipe up to see your glances so you can measure your heart rate. Uh, you can see how much power you have remaining. Uh, you can set up an activity to uh, set some fitness goals. You can see your calendar events, your weather, your stocks, your maps and a few other things. You can swipe down to dismiss that. Now you can press the digital crown again to get to your home screen. This is your launcher. So this is where all your apps live. So for example, if you want to launch your mail app, just tap on it, it takes you right to mail. Now as you can see here, we can flip through the interface or you can use the digital crown so you don't block the screen while you're interacting with it. Now when you're within an app and you force touch on something, basically press on the screen, you get two additional options and this is completely contextual. So for example, when you're in an email, you can flag this email, delete it, or select it as unread. Now we can go back to our home screen just by tapping the digital crown here and we can jump to another app if we want. So we can go to the music player and we can see now playing and click play and this will play music on our device. So this basically means you can use your watch to remotely control the music playing on your device. Now, if you wanna jump back to your controls, all you have to do is swipe up from the bottom to get to glances. So again, this contains all those quick glances, but this also contains uh, what you're currently playing. So you can remotely control it, pause it and that sort of thing, adjust the volume, skip a track and more. Now, when you're within the app launcher, you can move around and navigate. You can also zoom in and out with the digital crown. So you can basically zoom in onto an app like so. Uh, you can also hit the digital crown to go back to the app launcher. So we have lots of apps included here, including a remote camera release. So you can actually use this as a viewfinder for your camera. It launches the camera app right on your device and allows you to take photographs. So you can see a live view of your camera from your watch and you can snap a photograph like so. In fact, you actually get a little haptic feedback when that happens. So you'll actually feel a little tick letting you know that the photograph has been taken. 
Now you can't access your notifications or your glances from the app launcher. So what you have to do is go back to the clock here, swipe up to get to glances or swipe down to see your notifications. So if we swipe up here and swipe all the way to the right, you get to our control. So we have airplane mode, do not disturb and silence mode. You can also ping your phone. So if you're, if you're, if you've lost your iPhone here, just ping it, it'll start ringing for you. Now going back to my main watch, you can see I do have notifications here so I can swipe down to see all of them. Now I can tap on them to bring up that app like so and I can dismiss this message if I want. I can tap the home button to take me back to where I was and go back to the next message and again dismiss that. Or I can just swipe on the notification to act upon it. In this case, I can clear it. I can also place and receive phone calls here. So we have a full phone app. Of course, this is entirely dependent on your connected phone. So you can see all your favorites, your recents, your contacts, even your voicemail. So if you want to select a contact, it takes you to your library and you can scroll through it with your digital crown or just swipe up on it. Now, when you're receiving a phone call, it rings on both your phone and your watch. So you can either use your watch or your phone to enter the phone call. So this is a test. Now you can receive and place phone calls on the Apple Watch. So this gives you an idea of what the internal speaker sounds like. Now the side button is dedicated to your friends. So you can customize this list under the Apple Watch app on your phone here. So I only have a couple here, but if I select a contact here, I'm just gonna select me. I have several options. I can directly call them, I can message them, or I can use digital touch. So let me go ahead and show you what that's all about. Now, if you don't know what this is, you have this little eye icon, which will tell you about sketching, heartbeat, and tap. Let me show you what that is. So we can tap the screen and it will send those taps to the user. We can also send our heartbeat just by tapping and holding our two fingers to the screen. So it's actually recording your heartbeat and it'll send it to the other user, again, assuming they have an Apple Watch. You can also just sketch on the screen and it'll send the sketch exactly as you drew it. We also have Siri integration, which you can activate in two ways. You can tap and hold the digital crown. What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills? Hey Siri, set a reminder for 8 p.m. to finish this review. Now to create a new message, you have several options here. You can use one of the canned responses or you can use voice dictation. This is a test of voice dictation, period. So we're gonna click done. We can also insert one of these emoticons. So we have the smiley face, we have hearts, and we have the hand gesture. So what we can do here is select one of the emoticons here, so you can select between a variety of them just by using the digital crown. You also have a little indicator in the upper right that tells you where you are in terms of selecting them. You can also select from a number of hearts here. Again, same story, lots and lots of options to pick from. Same with this hand gesture here, like so. So if you want that one, just click on it or click done here. And you're good. We can go ahead and send it off. You can also use your watch for Apple Pay. Just double tap the side button here to access your card. You can swipe to other cards if you have more than one. All right, so that is my first look at the Apple Watch Sport. Of course, there's a lot more to say about the Watch OS. I'll be covering more of it when I take a look at the Apple Watch in my next video. So stay tuned for that. And of course, stay tuned for my full walkthrough and review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.